Hey, what's up everybody? It's David, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you everything that I know about affiliate marketing from making tens of thousands of dollars with affiliate marketing. I know that can sound really like ridiculous or even a little bit arrogant, but I'm not saying it to brag, I'm just saying it to emphasize that I know a thing or two about affiliate marketing. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through step one to step done on everything that you need to know as a complete beginner because this is an affiliate marketing for beginners tutorial video. So we're going to be covering what affiliate marketing is, how it works, how to find offers, how to get traffic, pros and cons, and more. So let's get started. Side note, there's a coupon code for my courses that you can check out in the video description. In this video, is a great compliment to my how to make money with blogging video. So I suggest taking a look at that when you have the time. What is affiliate marketing and how does it work? So affiliate marketing is really simple. There's no reason to make it overly complicated. All it is is just the simple process of promoting a company's product or service to a targeted relevant audience. And then you get a commission <laughs> and then you get a commission based on sales. That's it. <laughs> like that's it. That's all that affiliate marketing is. And so the thing that I really want to emphasize is targeted, relevant audience. That's the key takeaway. Because so when you see here on YouTube or you see any type of blogger posting like huge numbers of from affiliate marketing or promoting some type of product or service, the reason they're able to drive that amount of traffic and sales, et cetera, is because they already have some type of audience. That's it. So how do you get an audience? That's the real secret with affiliate marketing. Well, you have two options. You have organic traffic, which means free traffic, or you can do the paid route, or you can do a combination of the two. Both strategies work well. Obviously, being able to run paid ads and then get a lot of traffic to your paid ad and then leverage affiliate marketing that way is a way to make money a little bit more quickly once you figure it out, but you also can proverbially lose your shirt because you can just end up spending a lot of money and not making any sales because running paid ads does take a lot of uh, startup costs and startup capital. You have definitely have to be going willing to lose like 500 to a thousand dollars before you even make your first sale, which is why all the time people in general tend to recommend going after organic traffic. So figure like build a blog, build a YouTube channel, build up your TikTok, build up like a Facebook page, build up an Instagram meme page, whatever, get traffic in that way and then drive sales as an affiliate. Now to actually become an affiliate is very simple. So most products and services typically have some type of affiliate program that you can apply to and join. Now, the reason why I say apply is because most affiliate programs require you to have some level of traffic, some level of ability to drive sales. Not all, but most like good programs require you to at least like, like prove to us, like how are you gonna drive sales? Where are you gonna be driving traffic from? Are you gonna be running paid ads? Are you gonna be doing the organic thing? whatever. So to become an affiliate, you just have to go to any various website where you think they may have a program or product, then go into the footer, check the description for affiliates or partners, click on that link. And then within that, you'll see some type of form where you can easily apply. And then that's it. Okay. So then you apply and then you just have to sit around and wait for them to accept your application. And sometimes they'll accept your application. Sometimes they won't. So for example, like Udemy is a very popular course website. They are actually a little, not too strict, but they're a little bit strict about like accepting affiliates. They're not going to accept you if you have a brand new website and no traffic and you have no following on YouTube or Facebook or TikTok or Twitter. Like you have to have some way to prove that you can actually drive traffic in sales so that these companies can easily approve you. Pros and cons of affiliate marketing. So affiliate marketing has a lot of advantages, but there are actually a lot of disadvantages. And I'm quite surprised here on YouTube that a lot of people don't like mention like what the negative side of affiliate marketing is. So anyways, let's get to the pros. So the pros of affiliate marketing are quite a few things. So the biggest advantages of affiliate marketing are one, you get to promote some type of quality product or service that you didn't have to make. Then you don't have to provide any type of customer support. And then you get a commission on the back end. And so that's great because you don't have to create the product. You don't have to provide customer support. And all your job is just to drive traffic and sales to the website as an affiliate. That's it. Sometimes you can figure out like what your audience really likes and then that gives you an idea of like what you personally should be promoting on your own website or blog or YouTube channel. <laughs> so anyways, I just want to bring this up because like I have an ESL website, which is about ESL means like English, uh, teaching English abroad. So teaching English in Thailand, Vietnam, etc. And so I was promoting an ESL book about how to go abroad and teach English. And I was making sales and then I got thinking like, why don't I just make my own product? Like this is selling, this is working. Why don't I just do it myself? 
that's what I did. And so that's what's helpful about affiliate marketing because sometimes you can get some type of insight into like what people are actually buying and then you can kind of figure out like, okay, like people really like this product, I can make this product myself. But again, that's not always an option. And that's why affiliate marketing is really great because there's no startup cost, it's really low risk, and you can just try different things out. And sometimes there's just no product or service that you personally can make yourself, so it's better to promote some other type of product or service. For example, like here on my channel, I make WordPress tutorials, tutorials building websites with website builders like Wix, Squarespace, Shopify, etc. And so it's like, well, I'm not going to be starting a hosting company and I'm not going to be starting a domain name registrar. So <laughs> I'm really happy to like go ahead and promote like Bluehost or Wix or Squarespace as an affiliate and get a commission based on sales I'm able to drive by providing helpful quality tutorials that allow people to have success online and build a website. And so there's always some type of like value exchange. So it's like I'm doing the work upfront and creating some type of helpful content for a wide variety of people that's scalable. And in return, I'm able to make a little bit of money on the back in from affiliate marketing in a way that like I look I can't like I can't build my own website builder so it's great to be able to take advantage of other products and services and that is a big pro of affiliate marketing now for the cons of affiliate marketing so for this there's only two big cons in my opinion so the first one is that at any time the affiliate program can change their terms of service about how much they pay you because you're an affiliate you're paid a commission they can just arbitrarily all right we're going to stop paying you 30 percent and pay you 15 percent they can do that at any time and so like Amazon Associates for example it's very famous for reducing their rates or maybe increasing a rate for a short period of time and then fluctuating and so like Matt of Swim University has a bunch of like really kind of funny posts where he's like ah Amazon Associates like reduces income again and again because Swim University, their primary income source is Amazon Associates. So he's trying to get away from that by promoting other products and services, et cetera. And so that's a big con because you don't want to build your business around like one specific company per se, because at any time, then they can like change the terms of service and pay you less, et cetera. Another con is that the affiliate program could just not pay you. Like they can just come up with some reason why your your commissions don't qualify to be paid out. So here on YouTube, for example, we have Daryl Wilson and Daryl Wilson is not a fan of Host the Gator and he has a great video about showing him where he made over $50,000 for Host Gator that he wasn't actually paid for uh, because HostGator came up with a, hey, like these sales were like, okay, the person, you know, got made a sale, but then they didn't create a website or they didn't do something. And so Daryl's like, well, why does that matter? Like I, you made money, I drove the sale, but you know, they have it built into their terms of service that, you know, if you make the sale, then the person has to do X, Y, Z, one, two, three thing after the sale whatever every company has their own terms of service but again this is a big issue with doing affiliate marketing because sometimes like you'll just have a program where they won't pay you for some reason like i'm a, an affiliate for fiverr affiliates so for example like i recently had i make about like 150 dollars a month from fiverr affiliates it's not like a massive income source for me but like they didn't pay me <laughs> like one month they didn't pay me it's like your commission was denied and we're reducing it from 150 like oh actually you only earned 40 dollars because i was like why didn't you pay me and they're like oh well these this amount of money was paid by the two accounts or something like this. I don't know. It's like, look, my job is to promote you, drive traffic and sales, and then you pay me. And so this is an issue with affiliate marketing of sometimes not getting paid. And at worst case scenario, you do have some affiliate programs that could potentially skim affiliates. So that means like not paying affiliates what they're owed or maybe paying a little bit less. So you really need to be careful when any type, when any, whenever you join any type of program. And so for me, I always want to make sure that any type of affiliate program that I join has some type of like clearinghouse that you're using or some quality built-in affiliate system on the back end so I can kind of track and understand my affiliate earnings and my clicks, etc. Because I've joined some programs where they don't have any type of like like tracking whatsoever. And it's like, well, I just sent to you, like this is when I was a very beginner. So this again goes back to my ESL website. I joined like a couple different programs to promote TEFL certificates and then the companies were like, yeah, here's your affiliate link. Like, do I get a portal? Do I get to see how many clicks or nope. When, when you make a sale, we'll notify you. I'm like, oh, so you just want me to like drive traffic to an affiliate link and then like me hope and pray that you're going to pay me. And so I did that for a little bit. I drove like a thousand clicks and made zero sales. I'm like, all right, I'm not going to be promoting this program anymore because that's ridiculous. A thousand clicks and not a single sale. So either it's not a good fit for my website or you're not paying me for sales. I don't know. And that's the issue. So 
I tend to like to stick to something that's like with using recruits in marketing, Impact Radius, CJ, uh, even at their own built-in platform like uh, SiteGround, for example, and Bluehost both have their own internal affiliate programs that are high quality and provide accurate, correct tracking, etc. So anyways, that's it for the cons for affiliate marketing. All right, so how do you actually find affiliate offers to promote via your website, blog, YouTube channel, email list, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook group, whatever it is you're doing online? That's why I wanna cover in this section of the video. So let's jump into my laptop and begin. Welcome to my laptop, let's begin. So I'm going to break this section up into three parts. First, we're going to discuss how to find affiliate offers. Then I'm going to talk about clearing houses and then affiliate networks. So these things are not all the same. Now, anyways, with any type of program or website that you see, uh, there's usually some type of affiliate program that you can join. So for example, this is Bluehost. They're one of the most popular web hosts in the world. And right now you can become an affiliate. So all you have to do is click on the affiliate tab in the main menu. Now, typically most websites are not gonna have the affiliate tab up top there. So what you're going to have to do is navigate to the bottom of the website. Then you wanna pay attention for language like affiliates, partners, something like that. So if we go ahead and click on the affiliate link in the footer, it's going to take us to join the affiliate team. Then you just go through the process to sign up, okay? And so you have to sign up and then apply. And so just because you apply doesn't mean you're guaranteed to be an affiliate. So typically most affiliate programs, you have to prove some level of a traffic or an audience in order to become an affiliate. And some affiliate programs will reject you outright. And so what you can do is just check out any website in your niche or YouTube channel in your niche and pay attention to like what other people are promoting. So for example, a lot of like finance guys on YouTube and blogs, they like to promote M1 finance. And so like, hey, sign up and <laughs> follow along with my M1 finance tutorial. Why? Well, let's scroll to the bottom and there we go okay so right down there they have an affiliate program so if you click over here and jump into the affiliate tab then right here you can find out what the affiliate program is so you know, the reason people promote m1 finance is that they get 100 dollars if you sign up through their link and then you put in a thousand dollars into your account so that's how it works now typically programs like this they're their own internal program so that's why I'm kind of going to lead into clearing houses next because affiliate programs can be built internally. So for example, this is SiteGround. SiteGround has their own internal program. This is not a clearing house. This is just the way SiteGround is. And so same with Bluehost. So for example, we come over here and click on become an affiliate. So let's just let this load. And there we go. So what this is right here is impact radius. So let's click on the first one right there. So impact radius, this is a clearinghouse. So what a clearinghouse is, is just a website that manages the affiliate program for a wide variety of companies. And so the advantage of a company, you like a co the advantage for a company to use like a clearinghouse is just makes everything easier because you can just create your own specific affiliate links. Everything's tracked, payments are kind of automatic, just easier for everyone for the affiliate and the affiliate program uh, combined. So it's just easier on both ends. And so this is Impact Radius. So if you want to become a member of M1 Finance, you're going to need one Impact Radius account. And then within Impact Radius, you become you can become an affiliate for a wide variety of programs. So for example, like Namecheap or uh, like WordPress themes, like, like uh, ThemeForest, for example, all use Impact Radius. Squarespace uses Impact Radius. There's quite a few different programs. So you're going to need an Impact Radius account. Now, with that said, there's plenty, there's plenty of uh, different types of clearing houses. So one, another one that I really like, a very old school one is Commission Junction. Well, they were originally called Commission Junction. Now they're called CJ Affiliates. And so this one's great for a wide variety of programs. So for example, GoDaddy uses CJ Affiliate. A lot of VPN providers use CJ Affiliate. You can find a lot of dating products, any type, like a wide variety of stuff is on CJ. So it's completely free to sign up to a clearinghouse. So once you sign up to a clearinghouse, you have your account, then you can apply to a wide variety of programs within your affiliate, within your account as an affiliate, if that makes any sense, okay? So there's some programs, again, like Bluehost or SiteGround over here, 
where they're their own internal program. But then there's other options, which are like a clearinghouse, which is like CJ affiliates. Then we have impact radius. And here we go. So Rakuten advertising, this is another one. So what comes to mind for this is Udemy uses Rakuten advertising. So if you want to like promote Udemy courses and get that uh, tiny commission promoting courses, which I'm not saying it's bad because like Udemy, there's so many courses, sort of like the Amazon associates of <laughs> online courses. So they're a court that you can always kind of mix in something. Anyways, Rakuten advertising again is an affiliate marketing clearinghouse. So they have a wide variety of programs. Same with share sale, same with AWIN, and same with Avant Avagant Affiliate Network, however you pronounce this. So these are just clearinghouses, okay? You have one account. Within this one account, you have a wide variety of options to apply to different affiliate programs. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Now let's jump over here. Now, what we're going to be taking a look next is specific affiliate networks. So this is a little bit different. So these are, I would describe these as affiliate networks. So you create one account and then they have a bunch of different products, specific products that you can promote. So ClickBank is pretty popular for finding kind of weird products a little bit, kind of niche specific weird products. So right over here is uh, ClickBank. And then you just, again, I have a tutorial on how to get started with ClickBank. So over here, you can just sign up and get a ClickBank account, and then you can start promoting products and now, services. Now, one website I suggest you check out if you're going to be going with ClickBank is CB Snoopers. So this website allows you to view what popular products are selling on uh, ClickBank. So you kind of know what to promote, what to avoid, what's working, etc. So that's CB Snooper. So another network to be aware of is JVZoo. And so again, this is an old school network and this is really geared for like affiliate marketing. Uh, you know, if you have an email list you want to promote products to or you want to kind of know like what upcoming uh, products are going to have some type of uh, sale, then you can kind of jump on the bandwagon for this. And so again, you just sign up and create an account. And so one little website to check out is called Munchai. So what Munchai does is right down here, it tells you what the launches are coming up. So for example, you can just scroll through this and you know whatever topic your website's on, you kind of try and find something that makes sense to promote. Now, personally, I find that JVZoo is a little bit more geared towards like the unfortunately like kind of spammy internet marketing style products, not you know, like that kind of stuff. So if we come down here, for example, um, and I'm not saying these pro any of these products are bad, but they're just more geared for like create a website, blogging, like uh, turbocharger backlinks, like they're that sort of thing. So like, for example, I am Wealth Builder, easy traffic bots. So this is coming up on September 16th. So you know that, so you can go ahead and like create a blog post. You can join this program and join this affiliate offer on JVZoo and just promote it to your email list, write a blog post, etc that type of deal. Now, something else to be aware of is Offer Vault. So again, this is just an affiliate network where you can find a wide variety of like really random products. Uh, for example, like we have Bitcoin Traders app right there. And then we have like all these other products. Again, not the most above board products in my opinion, but I just want to make this comprehensive so you're aware of this. And we also have a website called Flex Offers, which again is really more geared for like PPC marketers a little bit. So if you're going to be running paid ads on like Facebook, YouTube, Google, etc., I mean, you, you could do that with all of these networks. You don't have to just like stick to one. But again, I just want to make this video a little bit comprehensive. And so you can find a wide variety of offers here on Flex Offers. Amazon Associates is the most popular affiliate program in the world. So I'm going to make this its own dedicated section. So you really understand and can learn how to best leverage Amazon Associates on your blog and YouTube channel. Now, I, again, I have a lot of videos on Amazon Associates on this channel that you can check out. But Amazon Associates is so popular because one, it's a brand that everyone trusts and recognizes, so it's really easy to buy from Amazon. Two, they have global reach, so they're in a wide variety of countries, so it's easier to make sales internationally. And three, they have a wide variety of products that can match almost any type of website. So even if you have like some type of crazy website on like the law of attraction or numerology, Amazon Associates has some type of specific product that you can take advantage of and promote on your site, whether or not that's like an ebook or a podcast or maybe crystals or like a skull with a candle in it. It's official. I'm an idiot. Anyways, in this section, I'm going to cover everything that you need to know to get started with Amazon Associates as a blogger and YouTuber. So let's get started. Amazon Associates. So 100%, you should definitely sign up to the Amazon Associates program. It goes together with Google AdSense like peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> okay, so anyways, 
Now, I have a bunch of different content on Website Creator Pro that you can check out as well as this YouTube channel. And so I have a whole dedicated guide on how to create an Amazon affiliate website as well as a whole dedicated guide on the Amazon Associates program for beginners. I will link this in the description so you can check out and read it. But the reason I created this piece of content was because uh, what I want you to understand is that first off, anyone can sign up. Okay, you can come over here. All you have to do is click on sign up, then create your accounts. Once you do that, you'll have a probation account. So the probation account, you have to make three qualified sales. So that means you have to generate three sales within 90 days. Once you do that, your account will be reviewed to determine whether or not you can continue being an Amazon affiliate or not. So what does that mean like your account will be reviewed? So for example, if you're driving traffic from say like YouTube, for example, and you don't mention that you're an Amazon affiliate, they're not gonna approve your account. If you're driving traffic from your blog and nowhere on your blog says that you're an Amazon associate, et cetera, you're not following the terms of service, you're going to get uh, kicked out of the program. Or like if you're driving traffic from a website, then you didn't list your website because part of the application process is to list all areas where you're gonna be driving traffic from. You have to list everything, including YouTube channels, okay? And so when you sign up, just list out all your websites, list out any type of YouTube channel and make sure it's accurate because they can they can track everything, okay? So if there's gonna detect like, hey, you're getting traffic and you're making sales, but you didn't list out what site, they're not gonna accept you into the program. Anyways, Amazon affiliate earnings are all over the place. I currently make uh, thousands of dollars a month. <laughs> I know it's like, it's crazy, but it really is possible because Amazon can just, you can just drive a lot of traffic and everyone already has an Amazon account. So on average, I'm just about making like about a thousand dollars a month. Uh, I have a seasonal website that tends to spike this time of year up to like $5,000 a month, but typically it's like 900 to uh, $1,200 a month. Okay. So anyways, let's jump into the back end of my account. So right over here, when you sign up, you're going to be looking at this. And so you have a few different options. So first things first, I want you to navigate over here and I want you to make sure that you go to tools and then you come over here and you go to one link. So what one link allows you to do is that you can apply to other Amazon associates programs for other countries like the UK, Canada, Italy, Japan, etc. You definitely should apply to all these programs because, uh, again, it's the same process. Once you make three sales, your account will be reviewed, then you'll be accepted into the program. But what one link really does, what's really helpful is that when you just link to any product within your YouTube video description or your blog, it automatically directs the traffic to the appropriate Amazon associate store. So if someone's in the UK viewing your website and you, know, you have a link that you created in the Amazon associates US store, they'll automatically be redirected to the appropriate page on the UK version. That makes sense. So that's, and it helps you just generate more revenue. It really does. Like it's not a ton of extra money, but in general, one link has helped me make about 20% extra extra from the Amazon Associates program. All right. So anyways, well, once let's let's open up a specific product right here. So I just did a quick search for the Canon 90D. And so on the back end, you get text image, text only and image only. So the way you use this is text only. You have to go here and use the short link. Then this short link is what you can share on your in your YouTube video description is what you can also link to from a specific blog post. No, you are not allowed to cloak or change this link in any way. You can't use something like bit.ly or change it. So it's like your website.com slash product and then directs to Amazon. You can't do that. If you do that, you risk getting kicked out of the program. You just click this, <laughs> use this link. Now over here, you have the standard image, image all by itself, very simple. Then you have your code right down there that you can highlight, copy and paste it into your website and then the image will appear. Okay, no, so that's really okay. it. So okay. let's take a look at an example of a website using Amazon Associates. So this is ownedyard.com. This is a public case study website created by Spencer Hawes of Niche Pursuits and it's running Ezoic ads in Amazon Associates. That's that common, very classic one-two combination to earn an income from your website. Anyways, let's take a quick look. So we scroll down here. First things first, these are all Amazon Associates products. Now, this is being generated by a plugin. 
Typically, most affiliates use AAWP. This is a paid plugin. What it does is just allows you to create these helpful little product boxes because again, if we jump into the back end, we don't have this. We have text only image and text and image. So, you know, if you want to have something a little bit more fancy, then you got to pay for a plugin, but it's well worth it if you're, if Amazon Associates is going to be a primary income source for you. So anyways, we come down here. So now we have a beautiful looking product box looks great uh, and it really works to create high conversions so anyways and then that's it so we come down there and then right down there we have the link so it's the amazon link and that's it okay and so you don't just create helpful content so what you can do if you're creating a blog post like this is like if you don't want to pay for a plugin totally fine just take the image literally just take the image and then swap this out and just have just the image and then a little section that describes the product pros and cons advantages disadvantages like this works really well then a nice big button and then with the button you just want to hyperlink this using the text only so have this right there and make sure to have everything open up in a new tab and that's it and so your goal with your blog for affiliate marketing is to create a helpful brand based around a topic and you know you don't want to create a, a heavy website where it's all like these this style like review posts like best this best that best this you want to go after a multitude of different topics and just create an authoritative helpful website and plant that seed now because you don't start making money from for until like a year or two later and that's how this website's making money so it's like they you know this website has over 600 blog posts a bunch of helpful content like this like how to get rid of wizards in your backyard how to keep squirrels out of the garden you know this a uh, porch versus patio style comparison and guide like just a bunch of helpful content and then you can monetize that content by running display ads and then you can have specific affiliate oriented blog posts like product oriented blog posts like this to leverage amazon associates now again like i said every topic is different so like if you're a personal finance person, you're probably not going to be using Amazon Associates. It doesn't really fit that well. I mean, I'm sure there's some type of product, but there's like, look, being an affiliate for like credit cards and other types of financial products, probably a little bit more lucrative than linking to Amazon. But again, it just depends on the website. Now, I also just want to bring up too that there are alternatives to Amazon. They're not as popular, but they, you still, you still, it's not still, you still should be aware of what they are. So we have the eBay Partner Network. And I'm just bringing this up because these are like more physical product oriented websites that you can kind of integrate into your website like you would Amazon Associates. So again, eBay Partner Network. So you can just sign up here and it works the same way as Amazon Associates. Then you have Walmart. Yes, Walmart has an affiliate program that you can join and it works the same exact way as the Amazon Associates program. And last is Etsy. So Etsy is, uh, you know, those custom beautiful products and Etsy does have a pretty good affiliate program. In general, the biggest alternative I would say to Amazon Associates would probably be like Walmart. Uh, totally up to you. But again, just be aware, always be on the lookout for different types of products and affiliate programs that you can kind of leverage within your website, your blog, your YouTube channel. And don't just be so focused and have blinders on to only Amazon Associates, only Google AdSense. You know, there's lots of different uh, avenues that you can leverage and, and different things work for different industries, okay? And so just be on the lookout for different types of programs, okay? How to get traffic and make sales as an affiliate marketer. So I'm gonna break this section up into three parts. We have organic, which means like free traffic, then obviously paid traffic, which is the part that most beginners kind of shy away from. And I think a lot of people kind of forget about, like you can run paid ads, and make affiliate sales. And then the last, we're going to be talking briefly about email marketing. So let's get started. Okay, so let's lead off with organic traffic. That just means free traffic. And it's the way most people recommend that you get started with affiliate marketing. And it's definitely the way that I recommend that you get started with affiliate marketing, primarily just because you really wanna be able to prove yourself, like prove your whatever concept it is you wanna do, like build it up and get free organic search traffic. And then when you're making money, kind of reinvest into yourself and then expand into like paid advertising, if that makes any sense. That's in general what I recommend, but you don't have to do that. There's lots of people who've just jumped right into like PPC marketing, which is pay per click marketing, running Facebook ads and promoting like products on like ClickBank and other networks, et cetera, and just skipping over this whole YouTube and blogging thing and then going after that way in order to make money and make sales. So it's totally up to you. If you are wanting to go after organic, I definitely just recommend building a brand. Okay, that's it. So whatever it is you choose to do, whether or not it's Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, like a blog, a Twitter account, an Instagram meme page, whatever it is you're trying to do, 
figure out some way to get organic traffic and just focus on building a brand. And then once you have a brand that people trust, it's much easier to leverage products and services as an affiliate because you have an audience that trusts you. Once you have organic traffic and trust, what I definitely recommend is to go ahead and develop a close relationship with a few different affiliate programs and remain consistent in your recommendations across your blog, YouTube channel, social media platforms, whatever it is you're doing, because that's the advantage of building a brand is having that trust. And so what I specifically mean is like, if you're like a finance YouTuber, for example, like you wanna pick one web app that you actually use. So if you're using Webull, M1 Finance, Robinhood, Charles Schwab, whatever, you don't wanna be like every time, every different video, you're kind of like mixing up and changing your recommendation because it just devalues your recommendation over time. So the advantage of having trust in a brand is to just remain consistent and develop a long-term relationship with an affiliate. And then that helps build trust with your audience because you're constantly recommending the same product and service. Now, in order to recommend a product and service, you definitely want to pick something that you know and understand and that you actually use. I know, shock. <laughs> you should actually like use and know and understand the product. But you know, uh, you'd be surprised. A lot of people just recommend whatever for that big fat commission. Then they end up not making sales, and then they're wondering, like, how come I don't make any sales? Well, that's because you have to build trust and authority within a topic. So a great example of this is on this YouTube channel. I always promote Namecheap as my domain name register of choice because I actually use Namecheap. I understand Namecheap, and they're a good service. They provide a good product. They provide really good price points for domain names and low uh, renewal rates and free Whois protection. So I really like Namecheap, and I don't mind recommending them to my audience and so that helps build trust because I always recommend Namecheap and I actually use them and I demonstrate how to use them so people kind of trust it a little bit more because like yeah there are other domain name registers like Dynadop, Google domain names etc and that's not to say that they're bad at domain name registers but again you want to you don't want to dilute your recommendations by like recommending a bunch of random different products all the time so you just want to maintain that consistency trust and authority within your brand running paid ads so I just want to briefly mention this because it's something that I think beginners often forget about that you don't have to just grind it out writing like 100 blog posts and creating 100 YouTube videos and getting organic search traffic. Now that's really advantageous because like once you build a brand and you're up and running, it is pretty reliable, stable income compared to just like running paid ads. In general, I would recommend doing both, like have a brand, have organic traffic, and then like once you're making money, again, dabble into running paid ads. But maybe you have more money than time and you just wanna skip over the whole creating YouTube videos and creating blog post things. You can totally do that with affiliate marketing and lots of people do that. That's called PPC marketing, pay per click marketing. So that means you jump into some type of affiliate network like Neverblue, CJ.com, ClickBank, et cetera, get some type of product, and then you create a landing page and drive paid traffic from Facebook, YouTube, et cetera, to that landing page, totally up to you. But paid ads is a great way to kind of just get the ball rolling and test out different offers to see what works. It does get a little bit more complicated on the back end and with regards to tracking and the different things that you need to set up because you are going to have to create typically a website, et cetera, in order to like drive traffic to a landing page, et cetera. So it's not just this super easy way to make money. But again, it just depends on the product you're promoting because like sometimes you could just jump into like say ClickBank and you go over to like something like Outbrain and Outbrain runs paid ads uh, on like different news websites like CNN. And so sometimes you can have like a, like if you see CNN, for example, you have sponsored content click on that, it takes you to some type of landing page. And maybe you didn't even make that landing page. Maybe that landing page is part of the, like the what the affiliate program created on your behalf. And then all you have to do is just drive traffic to that page, whatever. And so anyways, I just want to bring up paid advertising because it's something that people forget about. But in general, what I would recommend doing is focus on organic and then move into paid, but it's totally up to you. Email marketing, yeah, I just fixed the window. <laughs> so anyways, with email marketing, I put this as number three because it's just a nice complement to organic traffic in building a brand as well as running paid ads. Uh, again, this is the trifecta. Like honestly, ideally, if you wanna make a lot of money from affiliate marketing, just a lot of money online in general from selling your own products and courses, et cetera, you definitely wanna have some type of like brand with organic traffic, be it a blog, YouTube channel. Then you wanna be able to know and understand how to run paid ads, then have an email list. Those three things things in combination are quite powerful, but they do work independently by themselves. But again, email marketing in, in particular is a little bit more dependent on some type of traffic source. So for example, with paid ads, you can run paid ads to some type of email opt-in form. People subscribe, get some type of free offer. Then you can send them down a funnel that you can test over time to make it optimal and convert at a high level. 
or you can just start an email marketing list for your organic traffic. So like with your blog, YouTube channel, etc., to get that free traffic on an email list. And again, follow the same process, send that traffic down a some type of funnel that you've Anyways, already built. Email marketing works. It's really effective. You should be aware of it and leverage it with your organic traffic, your brand, as well as your paid advertising. And finally, you need a website for affiliate marketing. This is non-negotiable because what you can do with affiliate marketing and having a website is that you can use something called Pretty Links on the back end, which is a completely free plugin. What it does, it changes a long, ugly affiliate URL into something a little more shorter, cleaner, and trustworthy. And you can customize it to say whatever you want to say. And so you could also use a service like ClickMeter that helps you track affiliate link clicks or you can just set up like Google Analytics and Google Tag Manager to manage your affiliate marketing, your affiliate clicks. So you're not flying blind, so you know like what blog posts, YouTube, any type of like advertising you're running, like where are your clicks coming from, where's your money coming from, et cetera, so you can know what's working and do more of what's working and figure out what's not working and stop doing that. So anyways, you need a website, so let's get started. Let's create a website. So creating a website is essential for any type of affiliate marketing, primarily because you can just create your own custom links and also you can create blog posts and just rank organically over time. So we're going to be using Bluehost in this example. So they are the number one recommended web hosts by WordPress. And so to get started is simple, click on get started. Okay, so right down here, we have a bunch of different plans. So I recommend you check out the Choice Plus plan personally, because that gives you enough resources and power to build a high traffic website, okay? And so like within like two years or so, you can have like a website that's getting a thousand or more visitors a month. And then if you wanna stick with Bluehost, you can, or if you wanna like upgrade to a different web host, you can. But Choice Plus gives you enough power and resources to get the job done. But Plus is also a good option too. It's totally up to you. So anyways, let's go down here. Let's go ahead and click on select. Okay, and so next we need to register a domain name. So it says right here to create a new domain name. So we're going to register a domain name. You have to have a domain name on your account to be the primary domain name. So go ahead and type in a domain name that you want to register. Okay, so once you type in the domain name that you want to register, it's going to pop up and tell you whether or not it's available. If it's not available, that means it's already registered by someone else. So you have to come up with something else. So let's just scroll down here and I'm not going to insult your intelligence and walk you through how to pay for something. Just fill out your account information. Right here is your package information. So just make sure to check the pricing point that you want to buy. So 36, 24, I would recommend 24 or 36 months. Uh, if you're really aggressive, you totally can build a website within two years. So in general, I would recommend the 24 month price points. Then right down here, we can uncheck this site lock security. Right down here, you have your payment information. Then right down here, acknowledge that you've read the terms of service and then go ahead and click on the green submit button. Welcome to Bluehost.com. So this is my Bluehost account. So let's go ahead and create a website. So typically, when once you submit payment, it's going to have some type of onboarding process that you can go through. I suggest just clicking on skip, skip, skip until you get to this dashboard section. You may see something like temporary box one, two, three, or you may see like your website.com. And so you may already have WordPress installed, but I'm going to start everything from scratch. So let me first navigate to my sites. I'm going to go ahead and click on add site. Let's click on a new site. And so we're going to be using WordPress. And so I'm going to be calling this the name of my site. And then the tagline would be hello world. There we go. So first thing I want you to do is make sure to click on the advanced tab. Right down here is where you can put in an email address. And this is the recovery email, just in case you ever forget your password. Right down here is where you can set your WordPress admin username to something logical that you can remember. Same with the WordPress admin password. So go ahead and fill out this okay, information. Okay, so next you're going to be able to install WordPress on a domain name. So just go ahead and use the primary domain name that's associated with your account. Down here, we have a bunch of different plugins. So in general, I'm going to unselect all of these leave the directory blank because you want to install WordPress on the root domain name, not in a subdomain. Uh, so like, like slash blog, for example, like you don't want to install WordPress only on like my domain name.com slash blog. If that makes sense. You want it on the whole website. So anyways, go ahead and click on it next and then WordPress will begin installing. Fantastic. So WordPress has been successfully installed. So let's go ahead and click on a login to WordPress. Welcome to WordPress. So this is your WordPress installation on your website. It's literally that fast and that simple to get a WordPress website set up. Now let's just take a quick look at our website. 
So first things first, you want to make sure that you have a nice SSL certificate set up with Bluehost. Everything should just be done for you and correct. If for some reason you don't have a secure website, just contact Bluehost support and be like, hey, I have an SSL certificate. Can you enable it on my website? They'll take care of it for you. Next, in order to log into your website, you always need to go to WP-admin. Literally, it's called a WP-admin in order to log into your website, okay? And so that's it. And so once you go to WP-admin, you'll have to type in your uh, email and then the credentials that you just created when you were setting up your WordPress website. So anyways, let's get to work. So a few things that I like to do. So first things first, so let's navigate over here to plugins. There's quite a few plugins that come with our default installation that we can go ahead and delete. So let's X out of this. Okay, so first thing, hello Dolly, we don't need that. Now this plugin right there that says Bluehost, we can go ahead and deactivate this. We can go ahead and deactivate creative mail as well. Okay, so now I'm also just going to select all three of these and go ahead and delete them. Now I'm going to leave Jetpack because I personally like Jetpack. It has a lot of helpful features on the back end for your website, but these other ones we can go ahead and delete. Now we're going to need a few additional plugins for affiliate marketing. So the biggest plugin that I like to add uh, is called Pretty Links. So Pretty Links is a great plugin to get you started with affiliate marketing. So let's go ahead and search for that. There it is right here. Let's go ahead and click on install. Then click on activate. Wonderful. So Pretty Links is now installed. So now we have Pretty Links over here in the main menu. So go ahead and click on it. And now this is where you can set up nice looking affiliate links for your website. So for example, if I was an affiliate for M1 Finance, I could type in like M1 Finance to make keep track of everything. Then the target URL could be something like M1 dash finance. And then right here is where you put in your affiliate link where it says target URL. Leave the redirection as 307 as a temporary redirect. That's correct. You don't want to have these be follow links at all. That's why I like pretty links because everything's set up on the technical backend correctly. And then what pretty links will do will tell you how many clicks you're getting. And so again, so if you're going to be running like say paid advertising, so you could set up like say Google tag manager and Google analytics, and you could set up specific links. So for example, like say if I was going to run like YouTube ads, I could do something like M1 dash YT. So I know like clicks on this link for maybe from an uh, advertisement I ran on YouTube or something like that, or FB for Facebook, totally up to you. Just, but that's, what's helpful about pretty links is that you can create these custom links just to keep track of where you're driving traffic from and where you're making sales. Okay. So anyways, that's pretty links. So let's go ahead and navigate to our settings. All right, so under settings, this is where you can change the site title and your tagline. The WordPress address should be HTTPS, so just double check that to make sure that's correct. All right, so let's go ahead and click on writing. Okay, so writing over here is where you have your different categories that you can set up. Now, let's click on permalink. So this one's actually quite important. So by default, it's going to be P equals one, two, three. That's a really bad URL structure. So in general, uh, you should use sample posts. If your website's going to be maybe like 50 blog posts, I recommend going to custom structure and then typing in slash blog slash post name. If your website's going to have like 100 to like 500 blog posts, that kind of range. And then if you're going to have a really massive site, you think over time, then it's something that you'd want to consider putting in like categories right, right here. Uh, over time. But again, that's something that you can worry about if you ever get to a website that has like a thousand blog posts, organize everything by category, then blog post title. Anyways, once you set up the custom structure, make sure to go ahead and click on save changes. All right, so let's navigate back to plugins because we got all that set up. And so there's two additional plugins that I definitely recommend installing. So one is called Yoast SEO. All right, so this is Yoast SEO. This is a uh, on-page SEO plugin. Uh, there's also Rank Math as well, and there's also All-in-One SEO. They're all really good plugins. Yoast SEO is the grandfather plugin. That's why it has the most active installations, but Rank Math is up and coming. So it's also something that you could test out well to see which one you like more. So anyways, I'm just gonna go ahead and install Yoast SEO. Okay, and go ahead and click on Activate. Great, so go ahead and click on Add a New. And one last plugin I want to install is called Smush. 
And what Smush does is it optimizes any type of image that you upload to your website. So it compresses images so they're smaller, but they still maintain the same quality. This just helps your website load more quickly. So just go ahead and click on install. And then after it's finished installing, obviously click on activate, boom. Okay, so we're pretty much all set within our plugins. There is actually one additional plugin that if you want to install, you can go do that as well. So it's called Total Cache, okay? And so Total Cache is an optimization plugin that makes a cache of your website so it loads more quickly after people have visited your website a few times. When you're designing your website, you don't want to install Total Cache in the beginning just because it's going to save a cache and it's going to be really annoying as you're making changes and like you're going to like you're going to have to clear the cache. Just don't install it until you're kind of done designing your website. All right. So anyways, so here is our website. How do you change the look and appearance? So let's go over here and go to appearance and go to themes. All right, so we have a bunch of themes installed already. So we have 2021, we have the 2020 theme, 2019, and then the Sinatra theme. All right, so anyways, the 2021 theme, I have a tutorial video on how to design a website with this. I have a tutorial video on how to design one with the 2020 theme, and I have a tutorial on the 2019 theme. Honestly, this doesn't look that nice, but the 2021 theme is pretty good. Same with the 2020 theme. Once you know what you're doing, you can make a really nice looking website, but let's in, let's go ahead and install a new theme. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually install the Cadence theme, which I really like. So first off, we can upload a theme. So uploading a theme is helpful. Uh, if you buy a theme, say from like Theme Forest, or you buy uh, some, you just buy a premium theme from another website, and then you can upload it here because this is the WordPress theme directory. These are free themes. Anyways, let's go here to search themes and let's put in Cadence. All right, so there's the Cadence theme. Let's go ahead and click on install and let's click on activate. Great, so now it's going to tell us to install Cadence starter templates. Let's go ahead and do that. Awesome, so now we can choose a builder. So uh, Elementor, I'm not a big fan of. I personally like Gutenberg more. Totally up to you which builder you want to use. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select the Gutenberg again. I have a video on Gutenberg versus Elementor you can check out if you want. So anyways, let's open up Cadence. Then we have a bunch of themes we can easily install and edit on our website just right out of the gate. Look at these, these are fantastic, like very nice for any starting any type of like personal website or an affiliate website, online course website, really a recipe blog. It's really nice. So let's come up here. I'm going to go ahead and install this theme right there and let's click on full site. And now it's going to start importing. So let's go ahead and start importing and checking installing activated required plugins, et cetera. Just let it do its thing. All right, so it's finished. That should take a few minutes. Don't worry, just let it do its thing. So let's go ahead and click on view our finished websites. Wonderful, so there we go. So now we have a full website up and running that we can begin editing and customizing to our liking. So to customize your website with the Gutenberg editor, you have two options. So first off, go to edit page. Once the page opens up, you're going to be looking at the Gutenberg block editor. And then you can also click on the customize tab within this menu right here, and that will open up the WordPress customizer. All right, so once the customizer loads up, you're going to have a bunch of different options that you can play around with and explore. So we have general header, which is the top section, footer, which is way down there. We have page layout, blog post, search results, site identity, menus, content options, etc. Now, this is site-wide customization. To edit each page individually, you have to open up each page individually. So right here, this is the home page. And so if we come down here, this is how it's designed on the back end with a bunch of different blocks using the Gutenberg page builder, which is WordPress's default page builder. So it's really easy. You can kind of just jump in here and change text, edit things as you want, swap out images with your own images, etc. And also just like delete sections all together. So for example, like this section right there. So for example, if I don't want this 4.8, I could change this to something else. Or maybe I don't want that there. I want this below and move this around with the arrows, etc. So it's pretty intuitive experience. It gives you enough granular control over the look and feel of your website to design pages as you see fit. And again, I have another tutorial video on this channel about how to just design 
a website completely from scratch using the cadence theme not using any type of template but if you want to use a template this is how you get everything set up and that is functionally it guys so it's really that simple to set up a website with wordpress and now you're ready to get started with affiliate marketing because you got pretty links installed so like if you're a youtuber or a blogger don't this is great so now you're really ready to get going you can jump into pretty links and join a bunch of affiliate programs and create nice looking links that are really trustworthy then you can quickly and easily create a nice looking website using something like the cadence theme just downloading a template like this and just installing a pre-made theme this is going to look really premium and really nice so anyways guys that is it for this tutorial all right everyone that's it for this video on affiliate marketing for beginners i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you got a lot of value out of it and i hope you learned something so anyways with affiliate marketing you have a lot of different options and a lot of different programs to leverage I just want to briefly and finally mention that you want to promote good quality products and services to whatever target audience that you have and make sure that those products and services are relevant and make sense for your audience. Okay. So you don't want to have be running like a how to teach English in Japan website, for example, but then you're like, here's a blog post on how to start a blog and promoting Bluehost or something like that. It doesn't make sense. Make sure you promote relevant products and services that you actually know and understand and trust and use and you're going to have a lot greater results particularly if you're going after organic traffic where you're building up some type of personal brand or just some brand in general now with paid advertising it really just comes down to the offer the landing page sometimes the offer will have a great landing page sometimes it'll be a really mediocre landing page and you'll have to like customize your own and create your own like maybe one page website design your own landing page that has a little bit higher conversion then you can test it to etc again running paid ads can get a little bit technical and a little bit complicated because it's not just about just running paid ads and spending money you also have to track performance track the clicks you know do a b testing to see which offer which copy works better etc anyways i'm starting to ramble so i'll leave it there my name is david from websitecreatorpro.com thank you very much for watching and have a great day bye bye